It's a solid crack. Solid crack. Sometimes we don't get good cracks around here. I try to stay up on the crack. <laughs> All you can do is have the best crack you can. Well, when you're doing it live and you're not just emulating the sound, it's you right. Know, you gotta get what get what you get. Hey, sometimes you throw interceptions. Sometimes. Yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna get into a little Elijah McGuire here for your pleasure. Our boy uh, Bryce over on Patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty. Hit us up. He's an OG over there. Shout out to Bryce. There's huge support from our man over there. He's on top of things naturally, as most patrons are. Right. We've helped. We've we've helped Bryce pull off some moves here the last couple of weeks. He's got some. He's got a couple solid squads. We've been helping him out with. I know we tried to get you in and out of the intro there, taking it easy on Patreon. But again, we appreciate all of the guys that have jumped over there to help us out, contribute to this fund here, keep this thing rolling, keep the good times going. Every and, week uh, it grows, and if, if you're not over there getting it in over there, you're missing out. You are missing out. And, and there's a bunch of for, people getting it. For the $5 or more that you might want to give us, it's the value, I think, is unprecedented. The guys that are over there, that they hit us up and say they appreciate all of the attention and the time that we put in with the hitting people back. Right, pretty dang quickly with trade offers that might be sitting on the table for you, um, and then obviously we got you know the questions that people ask us for the for the show every week that are more of a hey what do you how do you feel about this? But sometimes people hit us with hey I got a trade offer on the table, you know instant trade trade right. reactions from us is pretty cool for not very much money. Right. Well, there's a community page over on Patreon where you can basically post anything you want as a patron. You can ask, and that's where we're getting a bunch of trade questions from. And then every week, we hit up everybody with a post asking for ideas or topics, things you want to hear about on the show. And uh, if it's a good one, we'll bring it over here to the free show, which is kind of what we're doing today. Uh, Bryce hit us up, said... What is the outlook on Elijah McGuire going forward? Well, because, holy shit, an RB2 out of nowhere, basically. Right. Uh, not, not that, it, I mean, there's plenty of good ones over there. Sure. We just. But this is very prevalent, it's right? Very, holy shit, an RB2 out of nowhere. It's very present. Exactly. It's very present. He was on the IR. He's not here. All of a sudden, he's back, and then he's catching passes, and he right. looks good. So. If you watch that game, it looked better than what the numbers ended up being. Right. Exactly. And it's a pretty terrible offensive display from the Jets. Oh. Um, and then, so you got. Uh, we're going to really get into how Elijah McGuire looked and some good stats from last year and some rest of season outlook and dynasty outlook here. Um, and this is going to be a pretty cool little uh, segment in time for the Elijah McGuire owners and the people that don't own him and looking to go get him because Sam Darnold's hurt. So uh, struggling Jets offense, Sam Darnold's got a, a walking boot and he's probably not supposed to play this week. And if you got the veteran coming in, if McCown comes out there slinging the rock all over the place, I'm not saying it's definitely going to happen, but that's what he did last year. If he comes out there slinging the rock all over the place, you might have this one week or two. I don't know how the, how long the absence is going to be out of Darnold from his foot, but if McCown comes out there slinging the rock all over the place and, and Elijah McGuire looks good, we might have a very limited window here to go and bring it, put Elijah McGuire on your roster. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm just saying that could happen. And then going forward... The Jets looks like, <clears throat> excuse me, they're they're if they're str- if they struggle the way they have been for the next couple of weeks into as the doldrums of the season comes around for a struggling team, then Elijah McGuire may not necessarily blow up. So your buy window may be wide open for two months. We don't know. Sure. But as we talk about him, I think we're going to make a pretty decent case for why you should go pick him up for what he can do for you. Maybe not necessarily this year, but this is Dynasty. Right. And grabbing him now before he puts up too many PPR numbers is the, is the key. Right. And and this is Dynasty, and that, you set that up perfectly uh, because it is the Jets, and I don't know how excited you are about any of those players right exactly. now. Exactly. But, I mean, this guy came out of nowhere and got you dang 10 PPR points, and I know plenty of teams and rosters that are just praying for some RB2 help right now. So he's kind of like maybe can help you out some, you know, sure. moving forward. But let's uh, let's check it out. So you mentioned Dynasty, right? This is obviously Dynasty. Bilal Powell, who's who's been a staple in the New York presence for a IR, while. He's here. on IR, and his contract is up. Okay. So he's out of there next year. Uh, Crowell just signed a three-year deal. A banger. So he's never really been much in the passing game. Even though he did get a preseason, he started out wide and caught a slant in the preseason and mm-hmm. made some noise with it. And then you're like, okay, well, maybe they... But really, what we saw out of Elijah McGuire this week, those were his plays. Right. Those, Elijah was definitely lining up out wide. 
He's he had a nice play last year, lined up out wide, one of the highlights, and he's, multiple times he was lined up out wide in this last game. This this week, that's what uh, I mean. I'm right. sorry to sorry to take off on a tangent of what you were talking about with with old boy over there. Well, see, the and Crowell, Crowell is, is is underrated in, in my he opinion. He is. He's, he's he underrated. deserves some more. Uh, it's not his fault, right? No. He's a little banged up now. He's got a foot injury, and it's it's. I think it's showed on the field. He's not quite as as explosive as he can be because he could pop off some big runs, and yeah. he's not the worst in the passing game. But he's definitely not. A well, supply. it goes back to it's kind of those. It's the the the, uh, the funny joke that Casey likes to make is he has hands, right? You know, so like you can't catch you can't a ball catch. if you don't get a target. You know, so like, and I'm not saying that Crowell is out there earning m- bunches of targets. But if they do if they do throw in the ball, which they did this year a couple times and in preseason, and he looked like you said very underrated on his ability to catch that ball and not look terrible. I mean, I just mean from an overall standpoint. I know, but I'm saying, but like you know, it's when we're when you're putting together as the you're trying to put together consistent points every week, and Crowell has been the definition of inconsistency with his long runs and then you know just banging between the tackles for 50 total yards. You're looking for those catches and consistent catches, and that's where we're going to get to with McGuire. Sure. This dude is dripping in PPR points and and potential. His PPR potential is just off the charts. It is. Uh, he he played. He had 105 touches in 2017. Uh, he had 240 snaps. 128 of them were running routes. So that's a lot of routes ran on a limited. You know, especially. I mean, I guess 240 snaps isn't the worst. There's, you know, you. It's, it's not a ton. Well, it's not a ton of snaps, but it is a good route per snap rate. Right. And like, and he's a young man doing that. And you told me before we started about how many catches he had in college and right. the production he had on those catches. 130 so, catches for 1,394 yards and 10 receiving touchdowns. Right. That's 10 yards a catch right there. It's not like he's, you know, got half, you know, sometimes you see some guys that just get some dump downs and they average five or six, seven yards a catch. This dude's doing some work when he gets the ball in space at 10 yards a rip and he comes into the league that's what his job was as a rookie right. you know was to catch passes to be out there maybe he didn't feel only, only 26 targets 17 receptions but he was getting the routes ran like you said half the time half of his snaps he was running a route he took that 10 yards per catch into the nfl though with 177 yards on right. 17 catches right. so setting the stage for elijah mcguire he again he just comes in off of ir mm-hmm. but which is a foot in the injury. last month's DLF, he's at two thirty eight in the rankings, mm-hmm. which is understandable because anybody that did a mock draft last month, who didn't give a crap about Elijah McGuire, so we can only expect that to just skyrocket a hundred points. So let's say you go up a hundred spots, you're at a hundred and thirty spot. You're in the twelfth, thirteenth ish round right there. Uh, well, twelve times twelve is one hundred and forty four. So let's say you're in a tenth, eleventh round for just like you said, RB two out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. If McGuire's hanging around in the 10th or 11th round startup value today, there's only he can only go up from here, right? I, I, I think so. I think so. I mean, there's nothing to say they won't draft another running back next year. That's a good point. Uh, Crowell's the kind of guy that needs the volume. He kind of gets better as the game goes on. He does, to me, present some of an issue. But, we're, again, we're, we're really focusing on the PPR floor here, which – I think he looks great running the ball as well. I mean, anytime he's got the ball in his hands, like he's he's fairly fast. He has a he ran a four five two at the combine. He's got solid burst. You put that on a two hundred fourteen pound frame, and the results are fairly impressive. Right. I mean, you can't bust off a sixty nine yard touchdown run unless you've got a second gear of sorts to to keep away from those secondary defenders right well i mean at 510 215 let's give him another pound because he's, right. he's a grown-ass man sure at 510 215 and with those receiving chops with the route i mean it and in this just this week with his first game back three out of four of those catches were from being lined up maybe two out of four of those catches was being from lined up out wide right it's one not, was a screen and right. one was a, a route from the backfield okay and then the other two were literally from out playing right. in the wide out position the slot, and out running, wide. right and then running you know some ends and some slants right. and like that's again that's his role on this team and good catches hands he catches away from his body and then he's making defenders miss off the rip hasn't been hasn't played any real like action that matters with his rookie quarterback 
and he gets right his first game eligible, like you said, that the before the game, they asked the coach how he was going to mix back in with Trenton Cannon, the rookie running back who had tried to fill this role for a couple of weeks, and the coach said it would be a mixture, and then – he didn't have a touch, what, halfway through the game or the start of the fourth quarter or something like that? Right. I don't know that he got a touch at all. Right. So, I mean, Elijah That was McGuire the start of the fourth quarter comes, when they said that. Okay. That's when the announcer said he doesn't even have a touch. Coaches are such, they're such BSers. Right. They asked, because the announcer was like, we asked the offense coordinator, what are you going to do now that you got Elijah back and McGuire and uh, Cannon? And the guy's like, it's going to be, we'll work a balance. It'll be a balance. And yeah. Then not a single carry. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I, I could confirm that. I, I don't know that he didn't get a single Well, starting carry, the fourth but, quarter, he didn't have a touch. Right. And in a very competitive game. And obviously, you talk about a competitive game. This is the Dolphins got up. Even the Blurb on Roto World tells you this, that at the end of the game, Elijah McGuire had a couple touches late in the game to pad his stats. This was a nasty game for the Jets offensively. And even Darnold apologized after the game, said he played terrible. He's got to be playing better than that. Two decent defenses, the Jets and the Dolphins. Two pretty bad offenses, the Jets and the Dolphins. And they right. mixed, they got together and what you for thought. one terrible match. What, what you thought would happen <laughs> made for an ugly game. Right. And Cannon had one catch for 15 yards. Just okay. To, Thank you for So this is basically, this is, you know, you have to strike right now before the iron gets hot. Because obviously. It would have been really, really nice of us to come on here three, four weeks ago and to tell you to go buy Elijah McGuire while he was on the IR. But we can't live in the past. What we see him do is come right back into his pass-catching role in this offense and ascending yet bumpy ride. They're just trying to get off the runway, and they're mm-hmm. hitting a little turbulence before they even get up in the air. But it's a young quarterback who shows a lot of promise, versatile receiving core who's been nothing but banged up, Good Herndon's looking good at tight end. Sure. You see the future, the building blocks for this offense. And like I was saying when we first started talking about him, it could be really ugly for patches. So you're not going to buy Elijah McGuire right now to plug him in next week and, and get that 25 PPR points. But if you if for some reason with McCown he was to get 25 PPR points on Sunday, or you know, maybe they play on Monday. I don't know when they play, but you know what I mean. If this next week he blows up, his name's all over the radar. So we wanted to come out here this week after seeing the usage and the idea and the fact that he's out there lined up out wide. And I don't even want to say it like this, but in a Le'Veon Bell-esque type role and just, like you said, he looks good in between the tackles. He's not going to wow you with speed. He's he's not straight up fast, but he's very balanced. He's very strong. He's got big looking – his legs look huge. And the pad level is great. His pad level is solid, and he is – he's. It's really hard. To, uh, there was a couple plays in that game where it was just blown up in the backfield. Sure. But once he starts moving forward, that 215 pounds is play, looks to me like he's 220. Right. You know, he's playing tough. And, with, and it's 510, so he's not like he's 6'1". Exactly. He's, he's not like out, a string beat. Yes, he's so, not a thin 215. He's right. a bulky 215. So, right. And you give me a bulky 215-pound young guy who walks right in out of, the, out of college into a pass-catching role on the offense, and the guy that has hands like glue – you got to want, even if it never pans out, what you can buy him for right now is peanuts. Right. So, what you're doing is taking a swing without having to give up. You know, this is not, hey, like we had, we talked all, all this is not a mid level boss. We talked last right. week about guys who, in a matter of three or four weeks in the season, all of a sudden became worth the first round draft pick. Right. Elijah McGuire is not there. But it would not surprise anybody. If it, it shouldn't surprise you if in three weeks you see Elijah McGuire get sold for a late first. Right. If he comes in here, obviously, you know, Crowell's in there taking the banger role, and this offense is not great. So, it, you know, it's maybe. It's going to take something to get it, those points to, yes. to make it look like he's yes. to the layman who's but not watching. If you can it, give but. up, you know, if you can give up two third round picks for him right now and give up a chance at who knows what right. for a guy who can catch the ball. Maybe a three and a four. If you can right. get into that neighborhood right now while somebody's sleeping on him. Would you give up a two? I wouldn't want to. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's you know, we talk, we, we joke around a lot in, on this show about how, you know, people say, hey, I got a, I got a 212. You know, I got a late right, two. Right. How do you really know? If you're eight and oh, and there's no chance you're missing the playoffs and you're stacked and your team is probably going to have a 210, 211, 212 type draft pick, mm-hmm. I would have no problem giving that up for Elijah McGuire tonight. Right. I'd give it away because I completely who am agree. I going to get at 210 right. that I probably don't drop anyway? And, you know, like the 210's tough. Two, right. 
You're actually at two ten. You're just hoping that somebody takes a couple of idiots in front of you, right? And you get Dallas Goder where you're right. where you're not supposed to, right? You know, in in one of our home leagues, I got I got Dallas Goder at three ten in a, in a league, Whew. and you're just like, what happened? How right. is that even possible? Right? And you know, so uh, that's, yeah, that's I, uh, yeah. I would give up a late two for McGuire right now, but I don't think I should have to. And if I did think I had to, I'd try to get a three back and right. you know just play that game. And sure. that's how, that's how we talk to our Patreon members each and every day about the trades we break down a trade and say okay we we get their roster we get their draft picks we see what's happening and we say okay hey you can get this trade done right now if you think he's shopping somebody we've had a a couple people get dalvin cook this past week before he ripped off a 70 yard Mm, run on sunday right and we helped a couple we helped more than one person get dalvin cook on the cheap and they're super excited about it today i promise you that and we helped them do it absolutely i helped help myself get uh Delvin Cook. Yeah, you did. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd be down to give up the two if I absolutely had to and try and get that three back. To me, this dude looks the part on the field. He's got a deceptive first step when he plants that foot to make a cut. It's very fluid looking. There's no dancing. Everything he does is very decisive and quick. I like the zero to 60 burst. He seems like a tough dude. He was charged with breaking 20 tackles on 105 touches back in 2017. Yeah. So you, you see him run mean, and I lo- it's physical running, and then you throw on this PPR floor. Let's do it. That's what I'm saying. So, like, you if you're if you're shooting for a playoff berth or you're, or you're, you know, you're one of those teams where you're blowing people up with Gurley and Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill-type teams where you just crushed your first pick and your second and third pick were awesome, but then, you know, you need an RB2. Why wouldn't you give up a two to get a guy who's going to give who has that PPR floor and will offer more of a ceiling maybe next year? You're not you're probably not going to get anywhere near that ceiling this year, but maybe next year as this team continues to grow and adds more pieces through the draft. And if you thought you were a struggling team and that's supposed to be an early two, I I, I wouldn't even try. Maybe you that's how you sell the the person you're buying from and say, hey, I'm struggling, so it's going to be early three right. instead of even talking about the right. two. Instead of trying to trade away a late two on a championship roster, if you got a bad roster, you're going to say, hey, I'm a bad roster. This could be 3-1. Mm-hmm. And you can do some things with 3-1. Remember that guy that got so-and-so at 3-1? You know? I mean. Exactly. So you can do damage at 3-1 if you make a smart choice. You probably got a one out of four chance of getting somebody good. But that's why you want to trade him for Elijah McGuire. Right. I completely agree. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. We're going to go to break real quick, and we'll be back uh, with more Married to the Game for your pleasure. <laughs> you okay? We good? Ah, yeah. We good here? We're going to break. <laughs> 